Hello, welcome to part 1 of Introduction to the Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller and Key Highlights. This is Karashma Gupta, Technical Marketing Engineer, Cisco. In this series, we'll be looking at the NDFC 12.x benefits and what's new. Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller, that's NDFC, formerly known as the Data Center Network Manager, DCNM, provides complete lifecycle management and automation for the Nexus and MDS platforms. NDFC streamlines data center automation, reducing deployment time of fabrics down to minutes, reducing operational errors with predefined deployment models, while improving fabric reliability with constant monitoring of compliance and health. It also monitors and alerts operators of failure conditions providing visualization of multiple fabrics with intuitive topology. In this series, we'll be looking at the revamped architecture and easy migration from DCNM for our existing DCNM customers. Let's jump on to the key highlights. Now, a lot has changed in NDFC. As you can see in the slide, there's a whole bunch of new features. In this video, we'll be looking at specifically the NDFC architecture, form factors, the network connectivity and the different kind of interfaces and the migration from DCNM to NDFC. Now let's look at the NDFC architecture. NDFC embraces a complete Kubernetes based microservices architecture on top of Nexus dashboard. By moving away from a monolithic infrastructure with DCNM to a containerized and modular infrastructure, IT can now leverage this new model to enable elastic scale out and improved performance and reliability. NDFC is just one of the services that sit on top of Nexus dashboard and hence with NDFC we are able to provide a very consistent user experience across all the services that sit on Nexus dashboard with dynamic menus, customizable dashboards itself, scale out with additional computes and an active active cluster. Another big feature we've added is a single installation mode with option to enable features at runtime. NDFC no longer requires ID to select a mode for LAN, SAN or IP fabric for media at the time of installation. Instead, this time we will deploy a cluster of ND nodes and we'll shortly talk about the form factors. But once you have the cluster up and running and ND is all functional, at runtime, we have something called as a feature management capability that allows a user to selectively enable or disable features, which include fabric controller for LAN, SAN, IP fabric for media, and even fabric discovery. So once you install, you can really select the features you like to run. So it's very opposite to what we had in DCNM where we would first select the mode and then install. This makes it a lot more easy and flexible. Now let's talk about the NDFC form factors. Now the node type that is supported is of course virtual node as well as a physical node which both vary in terms of their CPU, memory, etc. The deployment type is really always a cluster. It can be a cluster of three nodes or five nodes depending on the scale we have running. For lab purposes, we do support a one node VND uh, to test the product, to test the services. However, this is not recommended for production networks. And I highly encourage you to look at the sizing and compatibility matrix for Nexus Dashboard and Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller to see the latest and greatest. Now let's look at the network connectivity. There are basically two kinds of interfaces in the Nexus Dashboard node, whether it's physical or virtual. We're looking at the ND management interface and the fabric or the data interface. It's a requirement that the management and the data interfaces must be in different subnets. The default route for all MDFC services is via the fabric interface. Uh, a user, if they want to use uh, the management interface, there must be a static route that must be added on the Nexus dashboard for forcing all the connectivity out the management interface. We have a white paper that's available for all the network connectivity that's available for the Nexus dashboard fabric controller and I highly encourage looking at that one. Let's look at uh, the DCNM to NDFC migration. 
Now for all our existing DCNM customers, we allow migration from DCNM 11.5.x release to NDFC 12.x release. The users can either reuse or not reuse the DCNM IPs for the ND nodes. The very first step is to really take a backup from the DCNM 11.5 release, copy the backup file out and shut down the DCNM instance. Now, depending on the scale in the fabric, uh, there would be either a deployment or of, of a VND cluster or a PND cluster. And uh, we support one node only for SAN and PMN. Again, I recommend looking at the verified scale guide and the compatibility matrix for this one. Once the Nexus dashboard cluster is brought up, uh, we would need to add appropriate routes. Uh, there can be proxy, DNS, NTP, all the required uh, configurations in the Nexus dashboard cluster. Uh, the user would also need to add external service IPs in the management and data pools, especially for NDFC. Now, the enabling of NDFC app needs to be done on the NDFC, uh, on the ND cluster, and uh, we must not enable any other feature sets at this point. At this point, in the backup and restore workflow, the user must select a restore option and provide the backup file that was initially collected from the DCNM instance. So these are some of the steps for migration from DCNM to NDFC. Again, all of these are in detail uh, documented in the configuration guide, which I recommend uh, looking at before migrating or planning for the migration from DCNM to Nexus dashboard. That was it for this particular series. Thank you for watching.